Hey everyone, it's Andrew. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a video doing an unboxing and review of the Play Vibe 1500 piece wooden puzzle keeper, uh, which is in this box right here. Several months ago, I started getting back into doing puzzles and I ran into the issue where with my island as well as my kitchen table, I tried doing a 2000 piece puzzle and I just couldn't finish it in time. Um, so it was kind of annoying to have it out and about throughout the week when I got busy with work. And so I looked into different puzzle keepers and the Play Vibe puzzle keeper was highly recommended. And so I ended up purchasing this from Amazon for about $80 in the 1500 piece um, set. And so what we'll do in this video is we'll take it out of the box, show you the puzzle keeper, show you its general features and kind of its quality and things like that. And then I'm going to walk through um, actually setting up a 2000 piece puzzle on this um, actual puzzle keeper to give you a general sense of its limitations. Um, that's knowing that the 2000 piece puzzle probably won't fit on this, um, but it gives you a general sense of its functionality, its limitations, and kind of whether you want to purchase this as compared to a larger puzzle keeper if you do 2000 piece puzzles on a regular basis. As always, if you're interested in potentially purchasing this, there'll be links in the description below for where you can find it on Amazon. Okay, so here's the box that the Puzzle Keeper came in from Amazon. Um, if you look on the reviews on the Amazon website, some people did note that the box potentially was damaged or the Puzzle Keeper was damaged in shipping. Um, we'll have to see that once we get it out of the box. Um, sorry for the camera angle, it's just very difficult with the size of this. Um, but what we'll do is we'll just take this thing out of here and kind of see what it looks like. And so, sorry. So it looks like it was packaged with styrofoam and like an outer layer, layer here. Um, that's everything in the box. So it basically comes wrapped with styrofoam on the edges and then this um, kind of like protective uh, styrofoam kind of layer on the outside. We'll just tear this and open it up. And so it's upside down right now, so we'll flip it over. Um, but basically, this is what it looks like. Um, so. Um, as you can tell, um, there's going to be um, cardboard on the top here that's protective and then um, there's a surface here that's going to be this like cardboard layer and then there's going to be uh, drawers on the sides. Um, so essentially it's basically a piece of wood with a ledge on one side across all the edges here. Okay. And so that's what it looks like on three of the edges. And then on one edge here, there's gonna be no wooden ledge. Uh, the purpose of that is that you can actually slide the puzzle on and off easily and use the trays more easily. So that's the purpose of that. And then on the edges here, there should be drawers uh, that pull out. Currently they're taped in. And so let me just pull um, the tape off and kind of we'll get a sense of what these look like. So they're very similar construction. So there should be a total of six separate drawers. The uh, four are gonna be larger and then two of them are gonna be smaller. So these are what the drawers look like. Basically it's like this cardboard design attached to some wood and it might have a magnet here as far as sticking it in. It easily slides um, in and out for this and so it slides easily in there and there's this kind of like plastic draw for this um, which works but I don't really know how you would pull these out without it um, but that's kind of a like cheap flimsy thing where I'm not entirely sure how you would pull these out without this like little plastic like clip in here. Um, you might want to put a string in here to, for that purpose um, but otherwise they're kind of flush in there so it's a little bit difficult so you might want to either add drawers or screw in drawer handles onto this or put some sort of string around it so that it can pull out more easily um, but that's that. Here's another one so that's a similar size as far as that. No damage whatsoever. Um, we'll look on the other end just to check the overall quality out. Um, so here's the tape here. And then they've got this kind of like little instruction thing here, which says one puzzle board with six drawers. Oh, there's six knobs with screws and then three knobs in one drawer. So there are knobs for this. We just have to track them down. Oh, so here they are. So that's pretty cool. They do include the knobs. They're pretty like they're wooden cheap knobs with screws. Um, so we'll walk through installing that, but those are included. So I'll rip those off, put them on the side and I'll walk through. Um, but this is what the drawer looks like there. No damage there. We'll slide it back in. That one's a little bit more difficult. And then one more here, very similar, no issues whatsoever. And then there should be a larger, um, two larger drawers on one of these edges, I believe, or two smaller drawers. Um, so here's the other two drawers. So here you go. 
Here's one smaller drawer. Um, so that's a little, about half the size of the other one. And then there should be one on the other side as well, which we'll take a look at as well. And so they've got a ton of these like dry um, things to prevent from dampness, but that's the other drawer as well. Um, so that's the four drawers, the two drawers that are smaller, um, the overall size and design. Um, but that's basically what it looks like. Overall, the, the shipping, I had no issues. It's not warped or anything like that. It's flat, it's not damaged, anything like that. So if you do run into issues, I'd probably just reach out to the seller um, and get it replaced if you run into shipping issues. But there were a lot of mixed reviews on that and I was worried about that, but clearly there's no damage whatsoever. So now what we'll do is we'll just walk through putting the drawer um, the drawer knob on on one of these and I'll just set up the camera a little bit closer can you, so you can see that all right so here's all four drawers the the four square ones and the two, the two uh, shorter but longer ones um, what we'll do is we'll walk through putting in the um, the handles onto these um, it should be pretty straightforward but what they have is they're gonna have a total of six screws with two uh, six of these knobs how you'll put these together is it's gonna be a Phillips head screw so you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. Just slide the screw on the inside of each of these drawers, okay? So it's like that, all right? And then you should be able to just screw on the knob until it's tight. And then what you'll basically do is just tighten up the back side. Don't over tighten it because you don't want to strip the screw, but just tighten it so it's like hand tight um, and so that it's not wobbly. And that's basically all you have to do as far as getting these knobs on. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. So I'll do that for the rest of these. I'm not going to show that on camera. And then we'll walk through um, setting up a puzzle and actually measuring this out so you get a general sense of its size. Okay, so the knobs are on each of these drawers. No difficulty there. It was very easy to do. Now we're going to just measure these drawers to give you a general sense of the size. So it's about nearly seven inches is like six and three quarters as far as the width on the, the smaller ones by about 12 inches so a foot by seven um, that's those two and then these are going to be um, about 11 and a half by 11 and a half so they're square drawers um, so that's the size as far as these and then real quick we'll just check the size of the overall uh the, the kind of board um so the uh the depth on the shorter end is about 26 and three quarters um so that's a little bit shy of 27 which is what it actually says on the website so it's a little bit smaller than that and then on the width you're looking at um, 34. And so it's about 34 by 26 and three quarters. Uh, the dimensions they do state are 35 by 27. And so that is accurate if you include this border from the wood. Um, so if you have a puzzle, if you want it to be on the surface, it's just shy of that 27 by 35. So keep that in mind when you, you use this uh, puzzle keeper. Um, so it is a little bit deceptive with the, with the measurements for that. Um, but overall, the, the quality and build was pretty good. I'm just going to slide this drawer in to see how well it works for the knob. Um, so the knob works really well. There is a magnetic clasp mechanism. So once you get it in like this, it kind of stays there. You do have to pull a little bit, which is a nice feature as well, because if you, hopefully if you lift it like this, it doesn't slide out, so it does stay secure. Um, so that's pretty nice there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set up a puzzle on this uh, real quick, and we'll go through um, setting it up and kind of give you a general sense of its functionality as well. Okay, so the puzzle we're gonna be um, using as an example for this is the Amy Stewart Collection 2000 piece puzzle that's in this rainbow kind of dewdrop uh, color or theme. I picked this out because with the purple, blue, green, kind of orange, yellow, red, and pink. I thought it would be a good example for using this puzzle keeper because when you're sorting this out, you'll probably sort this out by those colors. And so it'd be a good example for that. Um, as far as this, it is a 2000 piece puzzle. So it, the dimensions are a little bit larger than this puzzle keeper. So it's 38.5 by 26.5. So we'll be, we should be okay as far as the overall kind of depth here. Um, however, we're gonna be about four inches shy from the width. Um, so when you use this, you have to keep that in mind. So you might have to play around with it. But um, the nice part about this is because it has a lip here, you could slide the puzzle on and off a table surface by lifting this towards the edge of the table. So that's a nice feature. Um, so this puzzle will be a little bit big here. I'm not gonna go through making the puzzle. It's really just sorting the pieces out. Uh, so we'll open this up, just pour it out, and then I'll walk through um, kind of sorting out all the pieces and kind of giving a general sense of its functionality and whether uh, it serves the purpose for 
for a uh, 2,000 piece puzzle, um, even though it's really tailored towards uh, 1,500 pieces. And so what I'll do now is I'll just walk through sorting this all out, and then we'll kind of give you a general sense of how it looks after that. At that. Okay, so I just got done sorting all those puzzle pieces out. Always it takes longer than you anticipate, um, but it was pretty straightforward. So I left all the edge pieces on the board. Um, so I'll start work using this as a working surface. And then what I did was it, in each of these, based on the kind of color profile, I used like green to the greenish yellow and then the turquoise in there. Um, and then the yellow, orangish yellow and the reds in there. And then um, basically the pinks here, uh, blue into this category or here, and then purple over here. I'll say that from um, kind of the size of this puzzle, this is a 2000 piece puzzle. What I found was I tried to initially keep all the pieces flush in the drawers. However, it was clear and obvious that there were just too many pieces to continue doing that. And so basically I stacked them up um, with the color side up. So you could basically work from the drawers and bring it to the main surface and work from there. I'll say that for a 2000 piece puzzle, this is definitely too small for that. It, I'd highly recommend it for like a 1,000 piece puzzle, but even what they say for 1,500 pieces, I think you will find limitations as far as using this as a working space as well as a storage space. Um, so there are limitations there. So I'd probably say this is probably good for 1,000 pieces, but definitely um, limited for 1,500 and definitely not uh, 2,000 pieces. Um, real quick, we'll check out how this stores um, with the drawers put in place so give me one second um, the real purpose of this is to see kind of whether you can slide them in easily with all the puzzle pieces without flipping them over um, sorry there's thunder in the background coincidentally um, so that's what that noise is um, so the drawers easily slide in um, you just have to be careful not to force it and then the one thing I do recommend is if you are maneuvering this make sure that you oh, so maybe this one's not that case there's probably too many pieces in there um, because they're starting to flip over, but let me see if I can get this in. Yeah, so this drawer has probably too many pieces in here um, for the small side here. So I'm not gonna force that there, but that's limited there. Um, and then there's one more here. And actually, I just realized that I don't think, yeah, I didn't even use this one. I didn't even pull out one whole drawer. So this might actually work for 1,500 pieces. I totally forgot about this one, um, but I'll, I'll spread them out. Um, but so I'd say that kind of pushes over the edge where I could see you working for a 1,500 piece puzzle with this pretty easily. I was working from only three of the larger drawers, so that might be why. Um, but definitely it's really good for 1,000 pieces for sure where you could work with everything spread out without difficulty. 1,500 I anticipate you'll have pieces stacked up like this where you'll have to pull them out and then pull certain colors or designs onto the main surface area to work from. And then 2,000 pieces is just way too large uh, where you can't you could probably store it as far as um, storing everything however you probably won't be able to work from this surface area so you could probably store it pull it out and then work on it and then put it away pretty easily I'm just going to slide these rest in here and kind of see um, but so yeah sorry I didn't even realize I didn't use that drawer let me try to slide this in just to get a general sense so yeah, you can just barely, I'll take a couple pieces of these out. Um, you can definitely store them in. If I use the other drawer, you could easily store the rest of these. Um, but basically everything stores into these without any difficulty. You can still have some puzzle pieces on the top. Um, obviously when you're maneuvering it, keep it flat and flush like this, be very careful. It is a little bit heavy and bulky, so you might need two people to carry it around and store it. It's 37 by 27 inches dimension, so it's something where um, you might be able to store it kind of like underneath a couch or uh, underneath a bed as far as storage, but it's not something that you could turn right side up or anything like that. And then the only other thing that does not come with this is it does not have anything on top of the, the, the top surface. So I'd probably recommend getting something like a carpeted puzzle keeper or something like that, where you could put that on the top of the puzzle um, so that if you have pets or something like that, or, or you're worried about dust, um, you can put that over the whole working surface and store it that way. Otherwise these pieces might 
get lost if you store them out completely on here if they're not if, if they're like free and not completely done um, so that's the play vibe 1500 piece puzzle keeper um, for $80 it's a little bit pricey but for the functionality and what it does I think it serves the purpose for a thousand and fifteen hundred pieces for sure it definitely does not do two thousand pieces as far as a working surface area but as you can tell it does store it and you can sort them out very very easily and well with that uh, so I think that works as well um, if you have questions comments post them below hopefully this video was helpful um, and as always if you're interested in potentially purchasing this there will be a link in the description below as well for where you can find it on Amazon so thanks for watching please hit the like button if you like this video and please subscribe to my channel as well